I went out yesterday. I have the last round of mason bees set out and I was gonna release them yesterday, but they weren't hatching all day. And then last night, they all hatched all at the same time, I swear. So I decided it was too cold last night to let them out. And I put them in this neat little container I made. Um, my friend Emily in England calls it a B and B, which I love. She made one. So I copied her and made one too. And they came in last night and they are ready to go this morning. So let's take a look at them. There's a little mason bee here trying to decide what he wants to do. So this is actually another mason bee house that is really pretty full at this point. You can see all the clay where they've built, laid their eggs and put in their bee bread and then they close the mud. Yeah, this little guy can't decide what to do. But look at all these little bees flying out. They're coming out. They're crawling all over this house. They're gonna go find some pollen and then they'll come back. This is another mason bee house that we had. This is the trays, the kind with the trays. You can take it apart. Uh, see those, those bolts underneath? You can undo those and in about December, you can come in and take out the cocoons. And that's actually what these bees hatched from are these little cocoons. And you can, this one, you can see they just start chewing out. And this is what I save over the winter so that they can hatch. Look at them crawling away. Oh my gosh, one just flew. I love watching the little mason bees. I think they're just, they're so peaceful, they're so sweet. And they're natives. So native bees are actually really important. Oh, look, there's another one. Let's see if we can catch it. There it is. Uh, whoop. I guess it's going in there. Um, here, here's the whole house for you. Right here, we got one right next door. Come on. I'm gonna move this one over so maybe it'll go in there. Um, so, oh yeah, it is, it is. Oh my gosh, wow. It just went in the little hole. I bet that this is one of the ones that's filling in that space. So I'm gonna come in here to this one. And I actually have, this is a cotton ball with some sugar water on it. And I'm just gonna give some of these little guys, let's give them a little ride onto the, onto the bee house. Come on, there you go. No, oh my gosh, I'd rather be on my finger. Okay, that's, that's not what we're going for. Come on, get down. There we go. Turn over, there we go. Oh, there was one right there. So what uh, my understanding of mason bees, and there are a whole bunch over here, look at them climbing out and just climbing all over, is the males are the ones who generally hatch first. Each tray, when the mom lays the eggs, they lay the, the females back in the back of the tray. So those are the first ones that are laid, but they're the last ones to hatch. So, and actually I can show you this. I have these uh, observation hives I got this year. And let me show you these. These are really pretty cool. So here's the front of the hive. Looks like that. And you can see the little plugs of mud. I'm gonna set it back down and we're gonna look inside. It has these panels that you can take out. And if you look in really closely, you can see that there are these panels. And so what happens in here is you have, like these will be the females back here. And the, the mom, mama bee lays, fills the back with mud, lays a little bee larva, and then puts in this yellow stuff, which is called bee bread. It's a mixture of pollen and her spit. <laughs> and she puts the bee bread in here and then she puts this little mud wall. And so she just lays a series of these and then they, they wind up hatching. And generally the males are the little ones out front. And so what the males usually do is they are the ones who come out first 
and they inspect the area and they put their scent down to help guide the females to the to the little holes so that the females can then come and lay oops lay some eggs oh my gosh look at these cute little ones right there those two it's a male and a female do you see the females she's bigger and the female actually has these little pinchers out front mason bees don't sting but i've discovered that the females pinch <laughs> it doesn't anyway so just don't pick them up here's a little male let's zoom in on him hello little guy so here's a close-up of those mason bees right there that but what I wanted to show you is this other one I got this year. Which will open the door and we'll see. Now this was an interesting one. Let me back out a little bit. Because what I thought, there were these different size holes in the front. You can see this one's bigger than the ones down at the bottom. And so I thought the reason this is different sizes is so that different types of native bees can solitary bees can come and lay and so what i thought might happen is we might get some leaf cutters or some larger mason bees but what happened which is just fascinating is that it was all the same mason bees and so they laid little tiny ones there and then up here which is what i think is so fascinating they laid double rows <laughs> look at that i mean they made so much work for themselves but they got in twice the numbers. And if you look, oh, this is exciting. If you look really closely right here, you can see the baby larva. Let me zoom in a little bit. Oops, wrong way. Do you see the little white larva right in there? That's a little baby bee. And so this little baby bee is gonna start, it's starting to eat the bee bread. This yellow stuff is called the bee bread, and it's starting to eat the bee bread, and it's starting to grow. So I think that's really amazing watching nature work. So these are different views of the different mason bee houses. So what I'll do with this, probably in December, this one opens up, is I'll come in and take off the plexiglass, and then I'll when they're cocoons, these will be cocoons, then I'll gently take the cocoons back in. And then the same thing with this one. This one actually has a really cool feature at the top where you can put the cocoons back in to let them hatch. Why do I bring the cocoons in? A lot of people don't bring the cocoons in. They just leave them out in the garage or something like that. And that's fine. Unfortunately, I found that our weather this year in Atlanta was so unpredictable. I mean, we had some 70 degree days in January, which um, that's great. And it's a real cue for the bees to start hatching. Unfortunately, there isn't really a lot of pollen out in January and the bees would just die. This is the new one that my friend in England sent me with, I think I showed you the, the drawers that the little observation drawers and you can see a bee started on that there are also some of these tubes up at the top and then this is one this is i love this as a design element but you can't really get into these to clean to take the bees out um, this is one of my first houses and it's warped you can see how you can kind of see through <laughs> It's not, so none of the bees laid eggs in there because it's not, it's not airtight. They laid them on this side. So that was something. And then this one over here, they laid, they filled it up. They're pretty excited with that house. So um, here are the bees. They are continuing to come out and crawl around and go explore the world. So remember, uh, mason bees are native. They're out in the world. This is really the end of when they're patching in Georgia. Um, a little north of here, they're still, they're still hatching and they're certainly hatching in the UK. But in Georgia, this is, this is really the end of their time for hatching. 
and so they'll leave all their babies in these holes for next year. But remember, if you spray a bunch of pesticides or mosquito sprays and stuff like that, it will kill the, the, the babies. It'll kill the bees. All right, so I'm gonna help a few more little mason bees out of the out of the B&B &B and put them in the actual hive. I mean, or the, well, I guess it's a bee house. It's sort of a hive, but unlike honeybees, honeybees are communal bees. They all work together for the good of the hive. And solitary bees are on their own. Oh my gosh, look at that tiny little one. Look at how tiny it is. All right, let's get some more of the males out. And so they're here exploring their home, their new home, and they're going to come back. The females are going to come back and keep laying, laying eggs. Okay, come on, get off. Oh my gosh, it doesn't want to leave. Look at how sweet that is. Okay, let's go back. Come on, go climb on there. Thank you. Thank you. Oops, there's one. Let's get this little guy. Here is a female. This one's a little larger than the males. So I'm going to see if she wants to go explore her new home. Come on. And there's another mason bee right over there. It's going in and out, trying to decide if it wants to stay. Maybe it did. Okay, she's almost decided to stay. Come on. There we go. All right. There's one. There's another little tiny guy. Let's get this one. Come on. All right. That one just, oh, look. There's another little guy. Climbing. Thanks for stopping by to learn some more about mason bees. I hope y'all will look out for your mason bees over the fall and the winter and then in the spring. Remember, they're the first things that come out and pollinate. Uh, they pollinate your peaches and your blueberries, your apples, all kinds of things. So take care of your bees. Bye.